Welcome to Module 2 of our Photograph Preservation Workshop. This module will cover methods to identify photographs and photographic prints. There are some important reasons why knowing the type of photograph is essential. It can help verify the age of the photograph for historical information or veracity. It will let us know if there are inherent issues or concerns with the materials used to create the photograph, and most importantly, it will determine what type of storage the photograph needs so that it can survive for future generations. This module will begin with black and white photography separated by the different types of support, metal, glass, and paper. Then we will cover color photography, photographic film, and then discuss common printing methods for photographic reproductions. First, we will outline a few things that can help with the identification process. Sometimes the photograph will have identifying information such as the print date or the photographic company on it. A date can help you narrow down the type of photograph based on when they were produced. A photographer, printer, or company name can provide a starting point for research. And if you're very lucky, the method or photography type used might even be printed on the photograph itself. Determining the support or what the photo is on is a key step in identifying photographs. Photographs can be found on metal, glass, paper, and plastic supports. Paper can specifically be tricky. Oftentimes, paper has an additional coating or two on top. Sometimes these coatings are so thick that you cannot see the paper through them. Using a magnifying glass can help you see the paper fibers. Here are some close-ups of different paper photographs. The first is on uncoated paper where the fibers are clearly visible. The second has a thin coating and the fibers are only partially visible. And the last has a thick coating where the fibers are completely obscured. Some notes before we begin. Photographic methods often have several different names. This module will refer to the generic and common names for these methods, but there may be additional names that are not mentioned in these slides. Handle your photographs with care. Many photographs have fragile surfaces that are easily damaged or soiled. Please see Module 3, Storage, Display, and Handling on how to best handle your photographs. Some photograph types are commonly stored in decorative cases. It is important that you do not disassemble or open the back of the case even if you cannot tell what type of support the photograph is on. Some of these photograph types begin degrading when exposed to air, and the case is the only thing that is keeping it safe. Although many early photograph types only produce images in monochrome black and white, color can be added afterwards by hand using paints, pastels, or dyes. Therefore, it is possible to have a color photograph before color photography was invented. Hand color photographs tend to have flat colors with little variation in tone or hue. The image may only have a few sections colored in such as blush, jewelry, or a piece of clothing, or the image can be entirely colored in. We will begin with metal plate photography. The first widely available photographs, daguerreotypes, were created from 1839 to 1860. They consist of a silver amalgam on a copper sheet and are known for their mirrored, highly polished surface. However, they tarnish very easily, which can be seen along the edges of the example on the right. The images are monochrome in a cool black, and they have the unique feature of appearing as both a positive and a negative image depending on the viewing angle. They are typically stored in highly decorative hinged cases. Tin types were used from 1854 to the 1930s. They consist of a silver image with a collodion binder on an iron plate. The surface has a semi-glossy sheen, and the image is a brown monochrome with low contrast and milky gray highlights. They are often stored in decorative cases, but not always. A small weak magnet will be attracted to the iron plate, which may be useful for identification. The next section is glass plate photography. Ambrotypes were created from 1851 to 1880. They are silver images with a collodion binder on a glass plate, which can be clear or colored. The image is actually a negative that only appears as a positive image, 
when placed over a dark background as demonstrated with the example on the right. This background can be a dark colored glass support, a dark backing material such as cloth or metal, or a layer of varnish or paint that has been applied to the back of the glass. The image is monochrome in brown or a warm gray black and has a low contrast with milky gray highlights. Ambrotypes are often stored in decorative cases and can be easily mistaken for daguerreotypes. Ambrotypes will only be a positive or a negative image. They do not change with the angle of viewing, unlike daguerreotypes. The gelatin dry plate method was invented in 1871 and was popular from 1880 to 1940. They consist of a silver halide image with a gelatin binder on a transparent glass plate. The image is monochrome in gray or gray black, but the tone can be modified with other additives and can range from blue to red to brown. It is very common for the image to have yellowed on the edges with age, which can be seen on the example on the right. This process produces a negative image, which is then used to create many of the positive prints that we will discuss in the paper photography section. The glass plate used is very thin, less than 1 16th of an inch or 2 millimeters thick. Next, we will cover paper-based photographs. Halotypes were used from 1841 to the 1860s. They are silver iodine images directly on uncoated paper, meaning the paper fibers will be clearly visible and the paper will have a matte surface with no gloss. The image is a monotone ranging from warm black to red brown and tends to be fuzzy in appearance due to the paper fibers. Calotypes are photographic negatives and were used to create positive prints such as salted paper prints and album prints, which we will cover next. Salt prints were also created from 1841 to the 1860s. They consist of a silver salt image on uncoated paper, with the paper fibers being clearly visible. Much like the negative, the uncoated paper will have a matte surface. The image is a monochrome red-brown or purple-brown, but they can often appear as a yellow-brown or yellow-green monochrome when faded. Salt prints are created from direct contact with photographic negatives and are generally associated with calotypes. Albumin prints were created from 1851 to the 1900s. They consist of a silver image on an albumin or egg white coated paper. Despite the coating, the paper fibers will be clearly visible. The paper will most often have a semi-glossy appearance but can occasionally be glossy. The image is a warm toned monochrome with a red brown, purple or yellow brown hue. Similar to salt prints, albumin prints are created from direct contact with a photographic negative. The print is often made on a thin piece of paper that has then been adhered to a thicker cardstock. Platinum prints were used from 1873 to the late 1930s. These prints consist of a platinum and palladium image on uncoated paper. The paper fibers will be clearly visible and the paper will have a matte surface with no gloss. The image is monochrome in black, ranging from neutral black to warm brown to purple black. The image itself is very stable, but it is common for the paper support to yellow with age. Platinum prints are also known to cause ghost images if they have been stored in contact with another sheet of paper. Cyanotypes were used commercially starting in 1872 and are still made today. Prussian blue pigment is used to create the image on uncoated paper, meaning that the paper fibers will be clearly visible. The surface of the uncoated paper is matte and may have a rough texture. The image produced is a brilliant blue monochrome with low contrast. A common cyanotype is the blueprint, which was frequently used for technical and schematic drawings until the 1940s. Silver gelatin prints have been made since 1874. There are two methods of developing silver gelatin prints. The first and more popular method is the developing out paper method, which is still used today. 
The second method is the printing out paper method, which was used from 1885 to the 1920s. Both methods create a silver-based image in a gelatin binder on coated paper. The paper coating of developing out paper prints can be barite or resin, while printing out paper prints only use barite coatings. Paper fibers will not be seen through either coating. The paper surface of both methods can range from matte to glossy or even be textured. Both prints create a monochrome image, but the hue will vary. Developing out paper prints are a cool black or brown, while printing out paper prints can range from red brown to purple, but will often appear yellow brown or yellow green when faded. Many institutes, when describing silver gelatin prints, will not differentiate between the two methods and they can be very difficult to tell apart. Here are several examples of silver gelatin prints. On the left is an early version of a gelatin print. In the center is a faded print showing the common yellow-green color that printing out paper prints often develop. And on the right is a more modern print showing the strong contrast and cooler black tones that these prints are still valued for today. Collodion prints were made from 1893 to the 1930s. They are a silver image with a collodion binder on a barite coated paper. There are two types of collodion prints, glossy and matte. Glossy prints are created by a thick barite layer and will have an iridescent sheen. The paper fibers will not be seen through this thick coating. Matte prints have a thin barite layer and will have a slight luster. And paper fibers may be seen through this thinner coating. Both types create a monochrome image. Glossy prints have a purple-brown or red-brown hue, while matte prints are more neutral gray, brown-black, or purple-black. Collodion prints can sometimes be found mounted in a decorative paper folder, such as the matte collodion print on the right. The next section is color photography, in which the color is a part of the development process and not added afterwards. The autochrome method was invented in 1903 and was commercially used from 1907 to the 1930s. Autochromes consist of layers of varnish, starch granules that have been dyed various colors, and a silver gelatin on a glass plate support. The glass plate is uncolored, making the photograph partially transparent. This also makes autochromes usable in early iterations of slide projectors. The colors are soft and subdued, and it may be possible to see the individual colored grains of starch up close or under a magnifying glass. This gives the image a speckled appearance. Color carbro prints were used from the early 1900s to 1950. These consist of three separate layers of dyed gelatin that have been developed from a photographic negative and then applied to a paper support. Sometimes a fourth layer of black gelatin is applied, known as a quadrochrome. The paper fibers are partially visible through the layers of gelatin. The print will have a glossy appearance in the dark areas with a semi-matte appearance in the highlights. It will also have some relief texture due to the multiple layers of gelatin. Highly pigmented areas where the gelatin is thickest will be taller than the non-pigmented areas. It is common for the colors to be misaligned since they are applied in separate layers. This can be seen along the edges, like in the extreme example on the right, or in the highlights of the image. The pigment particles that give the gelatin color can be seen under magnification. In the close-up below, abnormally large particles can easily be seen without strong magnification. Dye transfer prints were used from 1935 to 1994. Similar to carbro prints, dye transfer prints used dyed gelatin sheets that have been developed with a photographic negative. However, the gelatin is pressed against a barite coated paper, transferring the dye from the gelatin onto the paper surface. The gelatin sheets are removed afterwards. The paper fibers will not be visible through the barite coating. The paper is usually glossy in appearance, but can sometimes be semi-matte. Unlike carbro prints, 
dye transfer prints have a smooth surface since the gelatin layers are removed. This also means that there will be no visible pigment particles in a dye transfer print. Since the colors are applied in separate layers, it is common for them to be misaligned. Chromogenic color prints were invented in 1942 and are still very popular today. These are what most people would think of when picturing a photograph. They are made from three layers of silver and dyed gelatin on coated paper, which are then developed together from a negative image. The paper coating can be barite or polyethylene, and the paper fibers will not be seen through either coating. The surface can range from matte to high gloss. Chromogenic prints can appear red or yellow hued when faded. Older chromogenic prints are more prone to fading, while modern prints have better color stability. They may have a white border around the image and will often have a manufacturer or photo processor stamp on the back. Dye destruction prints were created from 1963 to 2011. Similar to chromogenic color prints, dye destruction prints are made from three layers of silver and dyed gelatin. However, these are developed from a positive image. The support can either be a resin coated paper, a polyester, or an acetate support. The paper fibers are not visible on the resin coated paper. And the surface can range from glossy to semi-glossy. They have vivid colors with high contrast and commonly have black borders. These were very popular for fine art prints. This next section discusses photographic film. Photographic film and photographic negatives were invented in 1889 using silver and gelatin to create a black and white image. Colored film and negatives using silver dye and gelatin were not invented until 1939. There have been three types of support used for film. Nitrate film was used from 1889 to the 1950s when production decreased due to safety issues. Acetate-based safety film, which has been used since 1908, became more popular but quickly fell out of favor in the 60s and 70s after polyester film was developed in 1955. It is very important to determine what type of film support is used, both for the safety of the film and the owner. Both nitrate and acetate film degrade very easily, and once degradation starts, it cannot be stopped. Nitrate film is particularly dangerous since it is flammable under high heat and must be handled very carefully or disposed of entirely. When acetate film begins to degrade, it emits a strong vinegar-like smell, a process which is aptly called vinegar syndrome. Luckily, there are some ways to determine what type of support film is on. Photographic film may have a label on the edge or a marking which shows what type of film it is. Nitrate film may be labeled as nitrate or simply as N, and acetate film may be labeled as safety or with an S. However, polyester sheet film may also be labeled as safety. Sheet film will also have a notch code, usually square, V or broad U-shaped divots that are cut along one edge. The pattern of these notches are unique to the manufacturer and film type. In the example on the right, the film is already labeled as safety film, but the notch code tells us that it is specifically commercial matte, a nitrate based film. If you are unsure as to what type of film you have, contact a conservator or film archives. They may be able to help with identifying the film and provide additional testing. Instant film was invented in 1947, using silver and gelatin to create a black and white image. Colored instant film using dye, silver, and gelatin was developed in 1963. Mass production of both types was stopped in 2008, but there is still limited production of instant film today. There are two main supports, the first being on paper known as a peel apart. The second is on plastic. The paper fibers will not be seen on peel apart film and both types will have a very glossy surface. Instant film generally comes in sizes from three to five inches and will often have an uneven white border around the image that is generally thicker on the bottom. It is common for instant film to have a manufacturer stamp on the back, but these may be missing with the peel apart versions. 
Finally, we will cover common printing methods for reproducing photographs. Gravure prints were developed in the late 1800s and create ink prints of photographs from etched metal plates or rollers. The paper fibers will be visible in the highlights or the uninked areas of the print. The image will be a monochrome, most often in black ink, but they can be made in a single monochrome color. They can be printed on a variety of paper types. The prints tend to have a matte surface texture, but they can have a slight sheen in the highly inked areas. If coated paper is used, they will be shiny. Gravure prints have a notable pattern in the print due to the etching process. Photogravures, which use flat metal plates, have an irregular speckled pattern. Rotogravures, which use metal rollers, will have a uniform screen-like pattern. Rotogravures are still used for printing modern advertisements. Offset lithography was invented in the late 1870s and worked by transferring an ink print from a metal or rubber roller onto paper. They can be printed on a variety of paper types, from uncoated matte papers to glossy coated papers. This means that the paper fibers may be partially visible depending on the paper type used. The colors are applied in separate layers in half tones, which creates a uniform pattern of dots of increasing size to create shades. It is common for these half tones to then create a rosette pattern when applied on top of each other. Since the colors are applied in separate layers, it is common for them to be misaligned. Offset lithography became the most popular form of commercial printing during the 1950s. Digital prints have been used since 1984 to produce physical copies of digital photographs and images. There are many types, but the two most popular methods are inkjet and laser prints. Both can create prints on a wide variety of paper types and other materials such as plastic, metal, glass, canvas, and fabric. Inkjet printing sprays liquid ink onto the support which creates many tiny dots of ink. These become less visible with higher quality prints. G-clay prints are high quality inkjet prints made with archival grade ink and paper. They are most commonly used for fine art reproductions. Laser printing can either use dry or liquid pigment-based toner and creates very uniform patterns of dots. Some laser printing methods look very similar to offset lithography printing and will create the same halftone and rosette patterns. Laser prints are less expensive to produce, but the quality of the print tends to be lower. There are many other methods of photography that we did not cover during this module. Here are some resources that have numerous types of photographs, reproduction prints, and film types to reference. These resources will also allow you to do in-depth comparisons into the different methods so you can more confidently identify your photograph. Thank you for watching and please stay tuned for module three of our photograph preservation workshop.